So there are a couple things that will make our life a little bit easier when using Simpler. And I just want to go over a few main points on Simpler. First thing I want to show you is this little triangle here. When we click on this, this gives us a nice big view of our sample, which we can see right here. We've got a little magnifying glass here. So if I click and drag, I can get really close to our sample and I can zoom on out. So if I need to move our start and end points, which are right here, I can drag these around until I get them exactly where I want. In this case, I do want to keep our start point right at the beginning and our end point, which is over here that I can move at the end. But you will notice that if I say move it to about here, when I play back my sample, I'm just looping that one little part in the beginning. I can make this even tighter. To your heart's content, really. But I want to have this whole sample for this example. We've got our attack, decay, sustain, and release controls right here. So by using our attack, we can get a little bit of a fade in. We could also bring down our sustain and have the decay a short amount of time. And our release will determine how long our sound will keep playing after we stop playing our keys. We've got an eight second release, so we get a nice long release there. I'm gonna just bring this down for this particular sample. I want something relatively short. If we bring it all the way down to one. A lot of times you get little poppings and clicks when you release. So I don't want quite that, so we'll say somewhere 100 milliseconds or so, or so should be fine. That sounds great. We've also got our filter section here, which will allow us to cut out some of the different frequencies. Right now we're in a low pass mode. We can bring it to high pass, where we're cutting out the low frequencies. We've also got a band pass, which only lets certain frequencies through in this little area here. We've also got the notch filter, which cuts out certain frequencies. And we've got the morphable filter. So this one is pretty neat because as I turn this control here, our filter's moving between our different types. So you can have a lot of fun with that. So let me go back to our uh, low pass filter because I think that's what I'm gonna want for this particular sound. I like that low end in here. And we've got different filter models as well. The clean is a more digital filter, but then we've got analog modeled filters and some of these are really nice sounding. And with these, you get a drive control. That gives you, I'm going to turn down our volume a little bit just so you can hear it without blowing out your speakers. This gives us a little bit of distortion on our filter, which can be quite pleasant. Let's bring our volume back down. I think for this case, though, I want to keep it somewhat clean. And maybe I'll stick with this particular filter. Over here is our LFO section where a low frequency oscillator can be used to modulate a few parameters. So first thing we'll talk about maybe will be the filter since we were just talking about that. This is the amount that my filter will get modulated. And this is the frequency. And you can see this waveform showing us exactly what we're looking at. Here's our waveform selector. We get different selectors here, different waveforms. Now if I turn on my filter here, and I'll just make this, this filter is moving according to this oscillator here. And I can make it faster or much slower. I can change the shape. This is just jumping up and down between a few different values. This is a little less smooth than our sine wave with our triangle. We've got ramps. And then we got kind of a random noise one. 
we can also have our filter modulate in a tempo synced fashion. That's eighth notes. Something a little slower. We can get really quite fast sounds. And we can also modulate other parameters too, such as the volume. Hit delete to go back to zero, which is the default. It's also pitch. I'll hit delete again to go back to zero. And there's panning as well. So now our sound is moving between our left and right speakers. I don't think I'm going to really need any LFO for this sound, so I'm going to just turn it off with this button here. Now there's a few things you should probably know about the modes on Simpler. We've got the classic mode, which and I'll just open our filter all the way back up again. Our classic mode just allows us to play our sound throughout the MIDI keyboard, so we can pitch it up and down across the keys. One shot mode will play our sample back. As soon as I press play, it'll play the entire thing. For this particular sound, that's probably not going to be useful, but if we had a drum sound, this would be great. So I could just trigger it with one hit and the whole entire sample will play back. Slice mode, which we'll get to as soon as this finishes playing. Slice mode will chop up our sample with these little slices here that we can move if we like. It's looking for transients in our sound and it'll slice it up into little segments we can play back. And we can adjust the sensitivity of our slicing with this control here. And that'll give us fewer slices. To play back. For this sound, classic mode is what I'm looking for because I want to be able to play some nice chords. Just like that. Within our sampler, we also have a pitch envelope. And that's right here. It's turned on right now. It's not really doing much though. We can turn it off. It's not going to do anything until we play with the amounts. So if I raise the amount here, say I'll make it a whole two octaves, 24 steps. And what this is going to do is it's going to start up really high, 24 steps higher, and gradually go down at this decay rate, which I'll draw out a little bit so you can really hear the difference. We could also set up an attack time too, so it'll take a little bit of time to reach 24 and then drop back down before it gets down to our normal pitch. So that's how the pitch envelope works. Again, I don't think I'm going to want this on this track, so I'm going to turn that off. And we've got some other little controls down here, such as panning of our sample. Again, I'm going to keep that at zero or center. We've got a spread control, which will kind of give us more of a stereo field. One of the things to be careful, though, with the spread is it's creating a little bit of delay in the left and right side of your speakers, which creates this wider sound, but sometimes that'll hurt your low end a little bit. So I'm going to just bring that back down to zero as well. We can have a little bit of randomness to our panning. And we can change how much our velocity of our keyboard affects the volume of our sample playback. It's a real soft press right there compared to a much harder press. I don't really want much going on here, so I'm going to leave it at about 20%. Now we get into our tuning section. We can change the pitch of the tuning. We can also turn on a glide so that we have a little glide between notes, make a whole second and a half so you really hear it. And again, I don't think I really want that for this sound either. Those are some of the basic controls in our simpler device.